Hello and welcome to Cross Creek Worship for Sunday the 14th of February. Thank you for joining us as we worship together from our homes. If you would say the words that come up on your screen in response as we worship together. The Lord of glory be with you. The Lord bless you. God in Christ has revealed his glory. Come, let us worship. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the Lord's name is greatly to be praised. Give him praise, you servants of the Lord. O oh, praise the name of the Lord. So let's praise God's name in our first hymn, Christ whose glory fills the skies. And so we turn to our holy God as we come to confession. Let us pray. Holy God, you know the disorder of our sinful lives. Set straight our crooked hearts and bend our wills to love your goodness and your glory in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So receive the forgiveness of God promised to each of us through the death of Christ. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we hear our readings, let's share together in the Gloria.
This morning's reading is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and reading from verse 3 to 6. And I'm reading today from the New Living Translation. If the good news we preach is hidden behind a veil, it is hidden only from the people who are perishing. Satan, who is the god of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. You see, we don't go around preaching about ourselves. We preach that Jesus Christ is Lord, and we ourselves are your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let there be light in the darkness, has made this light shine in our hearts, so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading is taken from Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 2 to 9. The Transfiguration. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to John, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, they were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Thanks be to God. Roses are red, violets are blue. Vodka is cheaper than dinner for two. Roses are red, violets are blue. Lockdown is rubbish. I'm glad I have you. A happy Valentine's Day to you all. Saint Valentine, a Christian saint, or some say there were two with the same name. It's great to celebrate Saint Valentine's Day, a saint's day, more renowned outside the church than within it. We know little about Saint Valentine other than that he was a Roman martyred for his faith and that he was an ordinary person, transformed by his encounter with the divine, or God. An encounter that so firmly affirmed his faith, that he was ready to give his life for what he believed in. I hope that my wife doesn't mind me telling this personal anecdote. Before we were married, she lived up a long hill away from my family a road running through what was perhaps the, not the most congenial of council estates. As I walked home one night at some unconscionable late hour, I failed to think about the dodgy council estate. I felt something else, that special zing, a lifting of the heart. The world had suddenly become colourful with opportunity. It had become obvious to me, perhaps not to her, that our future was together. These revelatory moments may be about love, or for you, it may be a special piece of music, or a special place in the countryside, 
You may feel a connection with God at a particular point in a church service. These moments can take our breath away. We are suddenly in a new and brighter place. Often they come so unexpectedly that we can be confused, in shock, unable to process what is happening. This is how the disciples felt when they experienced that mountaintop time with Jesus. As Jesus was wearing clothes that became dazzlingly white beyond any personal wash. And the historical figures of Elijah and Moses appeared. They even heard God speaking. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. I suggest that our almost out-of-body experiences are God breaking through. Some people describe these as thin places where any usual distance between us and God becomes momentarily removed. A liminal space where God makes himself, we could say herself too, where God is more clearly known. New Age spirituality has had recent popularity. It has many faces. Theosophy, modern paganism, astrology, to name but a few. It seems to be a spirituality without faith, a wandering in the wilderness, looking for that which cannot be found. On the other hand, these liminal spaces, these moments touching the divine, when understood with faith, as times when we are affirmed as a child of God, remind us of our calling to work for God's kingdom. These life-changing moments are, as Paul reminds us, not only God-oriented, but also God-initiated. The mountaintop experience enables us too to reflect the glory of God's face. There was a notice in a church hall kitchen. When you have emptied the teapot, please stand upside down in the sink. A veritable vision of worthy tea ladies standing on their heads in the sink. Join the dots properly. Don't miss words out. Don't miss the full story. I expect most of us have had some sort of God experience on the mountaintop, walking through the dodgy council estate or elsewhere. Join the dots and see, yes, feel the glory of God. The experience may be short-lived and the pandemic world may soon engulf your thoughts and life. But that glory is food for the darker days. Here's another personal bit of me. As far as I can recall, I have never received a Valentine's card. But please, please, please do not flood me with cards now. Many of us are happily partnered. Quite a few of us have lost partners and some of us remain gloriously and contentedly single. And I am sure there have been plenty of Valentine's greetings sent that have never been reciprocated. Despair not. Our earthly loves reflect that inexhaustible love of God for each one of us. We have no record of that mystical, special, liminal space that Valentine encountered with God. The mountaintop experience of the transfiguration is an encouragement above and beyond the daily grind of life, above and beyond the desperate realities of loneliness and pandemic life. We too can be transformed and be enabled to reflect the glory of God's face. Amen.
So let us affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so let us pray. Let us pray for the church and for the world. And let us thank God for his goodness. In the words of David in the Old Testament, Blessed are you, O Lord, for ever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heavens and in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. In your hand are power and might, and in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. And now we thank you, our God, and praise your glorious name. At this season of Lent, Lord, in these days of mercy, make us quiet and prayerful. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of waiting, open our hearts to the mystery of your cross. We pray for the church at large and the problems of being a true and faithful witness in all the difficulties, challenges and pressures of our world. We remember our church here at Crossgrape and give thanks for Matt and Terry's ministry among us. We also give thanks for all who volunteer their time and expertise in so many ways to contribute to the life of the church. All who, in Paul's words in his letter to the Corinthians, are God's fellow workers working as a team. We pray that our faith may grow and our witness be strengthened. And help us, Lord, to recognise the talents each of us can bring and encourage their use in your service. We pray for all those in need, all who are in distress in mind or body, especially during the COVID epidemic. We pray for those who feel lonely and isolated, cut off from family and friends, for those working under different pressures, for those tackling the challenges of homeschooling, for those worried about job and financial security.
we give thanks for the inoculation programme, for the research and its rapid implementation. But help us, Lord, to remember that COVID is a worldwide challenge. We pray that there may be an equitable distribution of the resources to bring it under control and a ready recognition of the need for the nations to work together. Finally, we pray for ourselves. Grant to us, Lord, your peace and joy to guide us on our way. Grant to us, Lord, vision in your hand in all our days. Grant to us, Lord, forgiveness when we stray. Grant to us, Lord, strength to tackle the problems and challenges we encounter. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. As our Saviour has taught us, let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. So let's share together in our closing prayer. Together we pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the courage to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So may Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. 
some brief notices as we finish the service today. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this week Lent begins and on Wednesday uh, is Ash Wednesday. There will be a service available on this website for you to join uh, and mark the beginning of Lent if you'd like to do that. The following week on Zoom, a Lent course starts with our partners from across the Helm Mission community. That's using material uh, written by Bishop Emma and based on the new county-wide church vision. If you want to join us on that, then you'd be very welcome. Um, there, we're running it twice each week, uh, once on Monday mornings, beginning on the 22nd of February, and once on Tuesday evenings at 7.30, uh, beginning on the 23rd. So 10 a.m. on a Monday, 7.30 in the evening on a Tuesday. If you don't want to do that on Zoom, then uh, we can email you or post you uh, a copy that you can do at home in your households on paper. If you do want to join us on Zoom, you'd be very welcome. And the links are in my weekly email or, or do contact me and I can send those to you directly. Take care, enjoy your day and may the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you.